In life, there is a time for everything. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to be happy and a time to be sad. We spend a lot of time wondering how long we might have to live on earth. 100 years? 30 years? But in the end, it is not a question of how long, but how well. While we miss the exit of one of Nigeria's finest indigenous rappers, we bring to you the life and times of that green, exclusively on Views and Tunes. Born Olaiton Ola Dagbo Olao on the 25th of October 1984 into a polygamous family, his mother the second wife of three, that green grew up like any other kid on the block. No one knew what the future held for this boy. October He spent part of his childhood in Mushi and thereafter moved with his family to Mero. We were formerly staying at uh, Mushi before I finally come to settle here. Dagwin, Dagwin lived in Moshi. He lived in Nebada. Dagwin lived in um, Sulele. But when he came down to my house, the way he talked to me, he explained some little, little things to me. He put me through. So I knew he was a very, very plain guy. Dagwin grew up in Mera. If, if you all know Mera, you know the kind of hood it is. Dagwin attended Mera Primary School then went on to finish his primary education at Roseville Nursery and Primary School. He completed his secondary education at Mero Community High School and Egbadu College. Olo Silewe, Mero Primary School Olo. But ko katonbe, oto wa si Roseville. School to want to si Adubo wambi bai. Well, when I was still in Roseville School, because I finished from this school, he was my very, very, very good friend. Even though I was one class ahead of him, I was in primary five, while he was in primary four, but we used to relate very well because, as at that time, there were not many people on the streets. If you look at the street now, the street is well developed, but as at that time, the place was still very bushy. He later then went to Mero Community High School. A lot of people might say, oh, because he didn't drop, he didn't go to school, he didn't graduate, this is that, that. But I mean, at this point, the level he, this guy was going could have employed some of the people we had, we have with PhDs and everything. His hope to further his education was unattainable due to financial and family issues. My dad wants him to go to school. He kicked against um, him going into music. He said even if he wants to be a musician, he should go to school first. I keep asking him why he should music as a career. I got particular me for what I did. I got 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 me for what I did. That green endeared himself to many people. And despite his ghetto persona, it was hard not to like him. Powerful dresser, he loves to dress neat. I like him because of his music. Dagwin is a very nice person. He's like everything to me. I like him because he's handsome. Everything that I am today, he inspired me of everything I am. He is a very humble guy. At the same time, he's disciplined. Unable to further his studies, Dagwin developed a deeper interest in music and gave it his time and his life. When I know him, I did not know him as a musician. When you see a young boy rap and you're like, Nigerian culture now, like, why should you be doing that? There are better things you can use this time for. Because our belief we I'm not on Korean, I've been going to put it out in the book. I'm not sure you're a boy, you're a girl, 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 you're a gir
And when he's in the studio, his elements are always right. He was somebody who had to fight for everything in life. He was never giving anything on a platter of gold. There was a day he went to a show. They didn't give him a dime. He has to come down to Lagos. There was no money on him. He came back to Lagos in a trailer. I don't know him before. I've not seen him before until the day I met him in the studio, Dr. Fab studio. I went down there with Lala then. I featured him on my song, Pari Popo. I wanted him to be on another song on the album called Live Level, but Sosik insisted that his style would suit Pari Popo better. He came into the studio, heard the beats, and the next thing he said was, he looked at me in the eye and said, Pari Popo, Olo for for now, now. That green, well, you want to be the do. Pari Popo, Olo for for now, now. That green, well, you want to be the do. And I screamed when he said that. Next thing he did, he tore a calendar off the wall and started writing the lyrics. We did a song together, um, Oti Yapa. When, when we were at the studio recording the song, that guy was like, where's your toilet? I said, ah, what's happening? You need to record now. We just took a barrel, we went to the toilet, and we were like producing the song, we were playing the song. And before that guy got out, he has finished his line without even listening to the song. When I was working with him, of course, we didn't really know that the video was going to blow up or anything. What we knew was we wanted to illustrate Nigeria. Sometimes you spend more than a session. Sometimes you spend the whole day. Sometimes you spend weeks trying to get one song done. With that green or spa, spa, spa. Working with him on that project was very inspiring. The authenticity of that green's lyrics has always been in question. Wondering if the things he sings about are things that have actually happened to him in reality or if they are just figments of his imagination. I want to go film corner. I want to go to Shelley. See, go go to film corner. Go sit at Bishop Bonnie. He just go form. One of the things that struck me about that green, um, apart from him knowing him personally, is is lyrical content. All those things he was talking about, he wasn't lying. He was talking about his life. Each and every one of us have some very serious life experiences that. You know, sometimes when you say that it, it, everybody thinks you're joking because probably what you might have achieved now, you look too good to have gone through all that stress. Or, you know, you look too fresh. There was a day he called me and asked me to get some food for him. I was just like, ah, Ogbeni me only know. It was like, Mumu Basibu Kishiwani from my father, Uti Wansha Kwansi Gufemu, all because I told him I can't get him anything. I would say he got his inspiration from what is happening around around him. Every message coming out from his songs as in its reality. He was a realist. With a style that is as catchy as it is unique, everybody soon wanted a piece of that green. Artists like YQ, Kenny St. Brown, Cartier, and a host of others. The possibilities were endless. Da Green dropped his first album titled Still Under Matter, which made little or no impact in the music scene. Undaunted by the disappointing outing of his first album, he went back to the studio and came out with something that changed the face of indigenous rap music in Nigeria, CEO, which stands for Chief Executive Officer, but which he cleverly changed to mean Chief Executive Omoita. Since the release of this album, Things began to look up for that green. The album is just barely eight months in the market, you know, and it sold over a million copies. He was signed on to his own record label, Misa Funye Entertainment, managed by Headline Records. When we finished recording Pom Pom Pom, after four months, he told me he's got a label that he wants to go to. So he told me he was going to Star Views. I was like, that green, are you sure about what you're doing? If you think it's fine by you, no problem. But I want to try and tell you, probably you cool down, find the right person. So he came back to me, was like, no, that he doesn't have anything to do with Starview again, that he's going to be by himself. So he started new suffering then. At the long run, we needed some money then. So we sat down together, like, that green. It's better you find somebody to sign you. I don't want this 
this whole thing to just go wrong. So he went out there and he told me about headline. I was like, no problem. That Green had been nominated in three categories by award organizers, Hip Hop Awards for Album of the Year, Artist of the Year, and Best Rap Album. His album, CEO, won him the Best Rap Album at the awards. He was about to be signed on for an endorsement deal by a multinational company. He had an enormous fan base and a highly successful album. Things were finally taking shape. However, on the 14th of April, Dagreen was involved in a ghastly motor accident where he rammed his car into a stationary truck in the early hours of Wednesday on his way home. Numerous reactions trailed the accident 